Unspoiled Network podcast. This is Unspoiled, covering The Hunger Games, book two, Catching Fire, chapters 10, 11, and 12. In these chapters, Katniss finds out what they're doing for the quarter quell, and it turns out Rashawn's guess about the all-star lineup was not that far off at all. Welcome to Unspoiled. Are you, are you coming to the tree? They strung up a man, they say who murdered three. Strange things did happen here, no stranger would it be If we met at midnight in the hanging tree Are you, are you coming to the tree Where dead men called out for his love to flee Strange things did happen here, no stranger would it be If we met at midnight Night in the hanging tree, are you? Welcome to the show, everyone. I am Natasha. I'm Rashawn, and I am disgusted. <laughs> I'm so angry. Yeah, I, uh, I, I knew you would be. <laughs> I am so angry. And how dare, like, and I might be wrong, but this whole idea that the, the, the quarter quells have been predetermined mm -hmm. going you know forward hundreds of years get the fuck out of here i know right just That's go bullshit. ahead and tell everybody that you came up with this last right. night mm -hmm. in a fit of peak and like who's gonna check you really like what does it matter I am like just you don't even fucking have the the balls to just come right out and say you did what you did. You fucking coward. I am so angry. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right then. Well. So uh let's begin with chapter 10 though because we pick up at a spot completely unrelated here. Katniss, when we broke off, had just stumbled into these right. randoms. We, we thought world. it was unrelated. True. <laughs> true. True. Um, and they have the her symbol in their cracker. Their little soggy cracker. And I love that later on, after she's left, she's like, I never asked them what that meant. Does this mean I'm the symbol of the rebellion? I'm like, yes! My God, this yes. girl. Mm -hmm. She is, like, <laughs> sometimes she is so fucking dense. Mm -hmm. And I just want to shake her. <laughs> <laughs> when they're talking to her about, like, what she what she did and who she is and what she's, what she's, what she means, it's kind of simple. She's like, yeah, yeah, I know, because of the berries. She might as well have said, because of the fucking berries. Yeah. <laughs> she, it's so weird. She's like, I know, I know, in that moment. But then later, immediately, mm -hmm. huh, what was that about? Mm -hmm. What do you mean? <laughs> Come back to Earth. What are you? Where are you oh. right now, <laughs> oh, girl? Yes. Oh, she is so frustrating sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there is another person here. The first person that shows her this cracker, she can hear that there's like another one, and they manage to like stumble out there on a crutch, and one of their ankles has been twisted, and it's just basically like dragging behind yeah. them. And this second person is like a little girl. Yeah. You know, she's in this fucking peacekeeper's uniform that is like four sizes too big for her. Uh, I felt so bad because she's like, yeah. where did you get the uniform? I thought this would be for someone else. That's yeah. why it fits so poorly. And you just yeah, clearly they had a punch. plan. And yeah. You, 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 it, like you put the pieces together and you're like, this was for an another. This was supposed to be for an adult. Mm hmm. Um, and then it's not much of a leap to assume that it's somebody that was probably really close to this woman because of the way she stutters. Yeah. And then we do find out later that, yeah, it was supposed to be her and her husband who, who were going to be the ones to sort of Paul Revere it, you know, and, and share, spread the news. Yep. Um, but then he ends up dying in that 
that explosion that was just purely a coincidence. It's such an unfortunate accident. Right, right. The, the, the factory where all of this, you know, descent festered is going to be exploded right after we tell everybody to go back to work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Shit, these three chapters are actually, I mean, well, say that they're a bit of a bummer is an understatement, but the response to the uprisings and how people are put down um, is really, really sobering because this is how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, power doesn't seed gracefully you know you have to wrench it out wrench it out of like fingers that are clasped to their dying breath you know it's yep. just, and like we talked about in the last episode you know it's really really easy to just you know, talk about burning everything to the ground but like not only is what do you build after ever you've burned everything but like when you start trying to burn everything to the ground, there you think that the powers that be are just going to be like, oh, they're burning everything to the ground. I guess we're done here. Mm-hmm. We'll just pick up camp and leave. Like, that's not how that goes. No, it is not. And there's a description at one point of, like, what it's like when the capital brings its full force to bear. And the little district is so outmatched. You know, it just... Mm, yeah, she yeah. says that thousands of peacekeepers started showing up. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. yeah, it's it's just like really, as you put it, sobering. Just a reminder of even if all of you fight back, mm-hmm. what are you going to like? They'll just annihilate you. Mm-hmm. And this is where District 13 comes in. Mm. So they because Katniss of course is just like what's the plan like where do you think you're going Mm -hmm. and they're like district 13 and Katniss is just like that's not there though and they say ha ha perhaps it is though (laughs) yeah this is I love this tidbit too because when they tell her you know this mockingbird in the the footage It seems like such a nothing thing, Mm -hmm. but it is the exact sort of thing that you would see on YouTube that would have 8 million comments and would send everybody spiraling, spiraling down their own rabbit holes. Saying they never got to the moon. (laughs) Yours truly. Yes. (laughs) Oh God. Um, Yes. That's exactly how that is. Yeah, this uh, this theory that is like they basically can't live on the surface, so they have made their way underground and have found a way to live safe from all of the radiation and everything mm-hmm. down there. And, and it's a reasonable like concept, but it would require so much equipment and organization and is it luck like yeah. yeah i like the idea that the reason that the capital leaves them alone is because they are the ones that had the nuclear power for the capital mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so the capital is just like all right i guess i'll just let y'all be over there <laughs> yeah because kind of like they mind graphite though and then she immediately says to herself Oh, I have that information from the Capitol. Yeah, yeah. And I realized like their minds weren't big enough to sustain an entire like district, so that doesn't even make sense. Mm-hmm. I love the. I love that she is at this point now in her life where she is recognizing that the information, everything she's ever learned, can't be trusted. It's a wild feeling, y'all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't love it. Yeah, a lot of us, have, when you first go through that, that is, um, that is, I mean, it's different, everybody, it's it's different, you know, depending on your age and where you're from and where you go to school and what your demographics are. Um, I know that when I am watching content about the just absolute nonsense that this country that we live in has been up to over its course. Mm-hmm. 
like I don't put anything past our government. I yeah. really don't. But everybody gets that information at different stages in their life. Mm -hmm. So I, I am not looking at content. And then in the comments, there'll be people who are just like, how did I not ever know this? You know, mm -hmm. how did I not know about, you know, like Tuskegee Institute or Henrietta Lacks or, you know, the, the sterilization of, of indigenous women and, you know, mm -hmm. and just all, and, and then the fucking assassinations and the coups and all that other kind of shit that we like to get up to and watching people be like, the fuck is my country doing? Yeah. <laughs> and once you, once you learn all that, like you can't go back. <laughs> it's a weird place to be in. Uh, I'm glad that that happened to me when I was much younger. I can't imagine being like my big age and just now having to face the reality that my country is absolutely like deranged. <laughs> <laughs> That was not the uh, the word I was expecting, and I don't know why, but that is so correct and just unexpected. Deranged is it? Oh my god! I, mm, yeah, I can't like I can't emphasize enough how right that word feels. Um, but. Yeah, this this sensation of then like seizing on this, even though she laughs at them in this moment, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but then later is like, but what if? Yeah, and yeah, she can't yeah. help bring it up to Hamish, who's like, this is the kind of shit desperate people cling to, and she's like, I know, I know, I just hoped, and he's like, yeah, because you're desperate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just like, ouch, Hamish, Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. I was a. Uh... I have to admit, I was, I was, I don't, for, for reasons that make no sense, I was, I was surprised that he shot it down so quickly, but I shouldn't have been. Like, that's right in line for him. Yeah. But I think I was also delusional for a second <laughs> and was thinking that he was going to be like, oh, really? That's great. <laughs> Backpacks ready. Right? Yeah. I just was so desperate for some, Thing positive to come out of these chapters and I did not I did not get it do you think that this is the kind of series where District 13 exists and is like living underground and what they're saying here is true oh I think that there's definitely I think that the Capitol is definitely lying about District 13 okay that I believe what is actually there though I think that because Katniss brings up, not to evade your answer, I promise I'll come back, but Katniss brings up, because when they first start talking about District 13, she gets a little salty. Like, well, what the fuck have they been doing then? Yeah, her immediate right? reaction is like, why haven't they helped us fuck those okay. guys? And so I, with, with that consideration that like District 13 is out there and it's existing, but it's still so completely cut off from everything else. I'm wondering what does that mean District 13 looks like? And the best I can figure is who, if there are people there, they, it's a small number of people. Okay. And I think that if they really are there existing, it's just the re one of the reasons the Capitol hasn't made more of an effort to intervene. Um, it could be the nuke situation, but it also could be that it's just such a small number of people that it's it's not worth it and i guess the only and then the question becomes what kind of leverage do they have which is bringing me back to the the, the nuke thing mm -hmm. is maybe it's like a i'll fuck us all up if you don't leave me alone right i'll right. i'll knock all this shit off the table kind of energy you know mm -hmm. um so that there's not enough people there left to be a threat to the capital in a way to undermine their power, but they have enough of a threat to just like fuck everything up that the capital kind of just is like, all right, we're just going to pretend like you don't exist. And keeping people away from district 13 isn't so much necessarily about being afraid that people would go there. Um, 
like try to escape their various districts and go to 13 for freedom, right? But it's more just about if they get an idea that there are people existing that are not under our thumb, that's what we can't have. Mm, gotcha. So all the energy on denying its existence is is to keep because just the look because look what just the thought of District 13 existing has inspired people to do. Mm-hmm. And this is like just a bird. Yeah. That they see flying, right? Yeah. Yeah. So if there was confirmation that there were people like that would that would be an, enough of a threat. So that's my thought on District 13 is I don't think it's a big thriving society. I'm thinking if anything, it's a small number of people who are existing very like in the wilderness, you know, like preppers. Oh my God. You know I thought you I mean? said peppers. And I was like, what? Okay. <laughs> I got it. I got it. I'm following you now. Um, but I could be completely off the mark because it's just, um, I think, and, and I want that to be the case because if it turns out that there's nothing there and all these people, I don't know, that feels so demoralizing. Like, mm-hmm. I'm like Katniss. I want it to be something. Mm-hmm, I, mm-hmm. I, I fully admit that I, I want it to be something. I am also desperate. Especially now. <laughs> After um, everything, yeah. Mm-hmm, so, like, I really want it to be something there as well. I want there to be an option. But maybe the point of the story isn't so much whether District 13 exists, but the point is it could exist. And if it could exist there, why can't it exist here in ours as well? And maybe, so maybe it's not about getting to District 13 and finding a a thriving society. Maybe it's just about using the thought of having a thriving society and that being the spark to incentivize people to to rebel, to fight back. And maybe that's the point of the story, Mm -hmm. as opposed to me thinking that it's going to be like some some quest and journey to get to district 13 to prove that it exists. Right. Maybe that's not the point of the book at all. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. I mean like, yeah. Based on the fact that we look like we're going back into the arena, what would district oh 13 God. even have to do with her? Like I what's the point? You know, go there. <laughs> Y'all, I don't want to, I don't we'll get there. Do Let's not, I'm jumping ahead. I'm jumping ahead. I'm so sorry. Um, but yeah, so this this whole thing with the factory explosion is so upsetting. Like everybody they know, their whole mm-hmm. one of them has their whole family in there. Yeah, it's uh Bonnie is the woman, and then a little girl that, sh- or I might have that backwards. It's Bonnie and Twill. Yes, maybe Twill's the woman, and Bonnie is the little girl. I'm pretty sure that's correct. Yeah, yeah, and uh, she's a teacher, and this little girl was her student. And this is there was one fucking line that just blew me away. So this district that they're from is like an industrial district, mm-hmm. and. She tells Katniss that, you know, I'm a teacher and this is Bonnie. She's in my class. And she's like, after class, we each have to do a four hour shift in the factory. Mm -hmm. Come on now. She's got a job. Her job is the teacher. Why don't she got to have a second job? (laughs) (laughs) I think there's a lot of teachers out there waving to get your attention, Rashawn. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. (laughs) But that just really, really pissed me off. And also, the you know, this is a child, and it just like I don't know this the 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 labor that the capital is getting from all of these people across their districts. Um, it just I don't know. It's just it's stunning. Um, the forced labor, by the way. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. People are being compensated, right? They're getting paid. Quotes. I, I, I literally did quotes like you can see me. <laughs> I did the finger quotes like y'all can fucking see my hands. But yeah, it's it's forced. They're extracting all this labor. They are not paying for it. People are living in these terrible, deplorable conditions. Um, and to think that's multiplied across twelve areas. Yeah. Um. And she talks about how people live in this this particular district, and because it's industrial, it's got like a real like inner city vibe. And she describes the way they live as living in tenements. So I'm picturing like just tall, bleak housing project style mm-hmm, buildings, mm-hmm. you know. 
Yeah, yeah. it's uh, it comes up in her mind because they're making like a tea out of pine needles. Mm-hmm. And it's clear they don't really even know that's they what they're mm-hmm. doing. They saw it on TV, girl. They saw it on the Hunger Games. On the Hunger Games, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, this the whole way that this like feels with them just not knowing. This would be me in the woods. Same. Are you kidding me? I don't know anything, you guys. It would just be me out here eating any mushroom and and berry going, guess I'll die. Like, (laughs) oh, well, you know. Like, it would, this is me in the woods, but the only difference is it only lasts a day because I die like immediately. (laughs) Like, so if I I get lost in the woods, it's not going to be like a long, harrowing ordeal. I'm dead immediately. Mm -hmm. So, and even Katniss is like, I can't believe they lived this long and they made it this far. Yeah, they've had, they've had, I was going to say they've had luck, but then one of them with their leg, yeah. is, that's already such bad news. Well, like, they came from eight and I forget with the map, I don't have the map handy, but, um, but I, so I treat the districts as like they're laid out in, in numeric order. That, yeah, no. That's not the case, right? No. So in my head, they had to travel from eight to 12 and, you know, but it's probably not that far. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm not going to pull it up because I get really sucked into that map. It's just be- and also like the maps that we see aren't they're not sanctioned maps. They're not official maps, you know? So I'm not even sure how relevant Wait, the information is. When when you say sanctioned, you mean they're not like from the books? Correct. The books okay, don't have you. maps and uh, the writer never released maps. Oh, okay, got gotcha. you. Oh. And it's it's sort of seen as like purposely not doing it in a um you're not gonna trap me in an inconsistency in my book like you know what i mean I mean, this is a woman who didn't even give fox face a name so she's not fucking giving you a map if she don't want to i love that actually <laughs> i'm a fan of it um there is a moment <laughs> i'm so sorry you guys because it's not funny but they're talking about district 13 and if there are the people there with powerful weapons and kind says why haven't they helped us if it's true why do they leave us to live like this with the hunger and the killing and the games and it just made me think of that lobster from futurama why with the hunger and the games and the hunger game you know like it just felt so what was his name? Zoid words in a different order, and have it be what? Are, why with the games, and then the killings and the hunger, and it wouldn't have stood out so bad. But she put the hunger first, and it just I, I could not help but kind of when I oh heard it the first God. time. So that's funny. Had, I'm so sorry. Um, but yeah, Katniss at this point is like you know the the main thing being if they're doing anything they better fucking do more and bonnie is like we're just hoping holding on to hope they exist and all of a sudden katniss is like oh right they don't have anybody of course they're holding on to this i have my family i have people and this does not feel real to me like Mm -hmm, i don't mm -hmm. need to believe in it frankly um but she gives them the food that she has with her because they are starving and District 8 has been starving. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, one this of them other says, point, is this all oh. for me? In just the same way Rue did. And yep. she's just like, oh, God. Yeah. That, uh, what is she, she, when she says that, there's just, the, uh, the way she phrases that is really sweet. Something about, like, the disbelief of the chronically hungry mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or something she says. I wish I could find it so I could get it exactly right. But, but that was, uh, it hit. When when I read that, I was like, oh, Jesus Christ. Some, and the thing, too. Yeah. Hmm? Let's see. The disbelief of the chronically hungry is correct. That's yeah, exactly yeah. it. Um, and the thing about them leaving District 8 is that that's it. There's, like, nowhere else for them to go. You can't just roll into another district and be like, hey. I live here Everybody. Now. Yeah. You know? Like, there's nowhere for them to go. Um, That is so staggering to think about like if you try to imagine this circumstance they are just in the woods now um 
And she and Katniss remembers she has you know has a flashback to the time she saw uh the Avox girl in the woods mm-hmm. and the hovercraft came. Like this is their life now. This is this is it. There's nowhere else to go but try to see what's happening at 13. Um and I thought about that for a second because it's hard to imagine in our like real lives being boxed into a corner that extreme yeah where i mean you don't have anything there's nobody you can call not a single person you can call not a single place you can go like i've had some fucked up shit happen to me but i've never been that far gone Mm -hmm. you know it is and for them to have risked risk that to leave is and for her to take a child with her yeah because she wasn't gonna leave wasn't gonna leave the child behind oh it's hard to even imagine yeah it's um the the kind of desperation of leaving when you also have no idea how to hunt gather take mm-hmm. care of yourself like mm-hmm. i'm imagining how scary it would be to just be on the street in a setting like mine where there are dumpsters to dive in i would hate it but i could figure it out Mm. if i were in the wilderness that's it like just put me in my fucking coffin it's all done um it's just so scary and then having like a child who's injured as well to like manage and worry about and that slowing you down like the whole thing is just so awful yeah so she finally leaves them and uh I like this moment before we finish as she's leaving them she Katniss thinks to herself all that shit with President Snow has been bullshit things have been like on fire there like I wasn't going to be able to quell that like what the fuck <laughs> you use the word so, well oh look I at did, you did look not. at you damn it <laughs> pulling it all um, together <laughs> but uh so she starts wondering like so what and he must have known when he was in my face telling me that I was, you know, had the power to control things, he must have already known at that time that that was bullshit. So why did he come to my fucking house? Yeah. And why, why with this whole song and dance? And she, she theorizes that it was just a, a ploy to distract her, to keep her from doing anything else that would set people off. But I don't know if she's reading that 100% right. No? What do you think? I mean, I think he was was definitely interested in trying to keep her from doing anything more damaging. But I think he wanted to see her himself and gauge for himself where she was in all this. I I think he wanted to be like, I need to look this girl in the eye. And and see and see for myself. Is she really trying to like cite a, inside a riot? You know. Hmm. Um, okay. Uh, as far as like, because otherwise, like the personal trip to her house to threaten her and like force her, coerce her into to this performance that she was going to do anyway, but he just like ratcheted up the pressure on it all. I don't know. I just think there was more to his visit than just trying to keep her from getting people riled up even more. Mm, okay. Well, like maybe we'll find out. Maybe we will. <laughs> Who knows? Um, so yeah, she... I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I do, but there's also Who stuff knows? that I don't remember. <laughs> Um, I have just reread it, so I remember most things, but there are some things. But yeah, this uh this moment where she reaches the fence is a real like stomach churner mm-hmm. because she almost puts her hand on it and there's like an owl that hoots abruptly and kind of pulls her out of her thoughts, or else she may not have noticed she's reaching out for it before she realizes that the the hum is there that she mm-hmm. apparently has heard a few times we wind up finding out that like it isn't unheard of for there to be electricity running through the fence mm-hmm. it happens sometimes but it is so infrequent and when it does happen it goes away so quickly that it's just not an issue they just wait it out but she knows enough that 
they are after her specifically yeah. Yeah. that they are trapping her and they are trying to like prove what it is that she's yeah. doing uh this is a uh... Like, my heart dropped a little bit because uh, I didn't know how the fuck she was going to get back home. Yeah. Uh, I was really like, well, you're fucked, aren't you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. It really feels like that. It's, and I, it's ugh, I hate and it. She, and she is kind of fucked. I mean, yeah, she gets across, she gets over the fence and everything, but, like, she has to pay a price for that. Mm-hmm. Um, And she is freaking the fuck out at first, which, you know valid yeah <laughs> that is the, the appropriate reaction to have yeah her her she eventually climbs a tree and lets herself over but she has to climb so high mm-hmm. that when she finally shimmies over she has to like get as close to the ground as she can by just like hanging off the branch and finally drops and she winds up really hurting herself um, possibly yeah. breaking something in her foot, bruising her tailbone, which uh, if you've ever done that, you know how it is unpleasant. Oh, that sucks so mm-hmm. bad. And um, when she gets home, there are some peacekeepers waiting for her. This shit was harrowing. And she's <laughs> smart enough to know that they're trying to trap me. So I better set myself up. And she goes to several stores before going home so that she's got a bunch of stuff in her bag. Yeah. She is managing all this on that w- my possibly broken foot. And I was just in awe. I was just like, wow. <laughs> Honestly. And when she like gets home, she has to walk as if she's not in pain. She mm-hmm. can't let them know she's even injured at all. And yeah, she's going to tell her mom, like, she's got this story. Because the other thing, too, is, like, nobody knows where she went. And she went out of her way to conceal that she, what she was doing. Mm-hmm. So the reason she had all that food on her was because um, she wanted her mom to think that she was just out spending the day handing food out, which is something that they've become accustomed to doing since, you know, the district kind of shut down on them. Mm-hmm. Um, so nobody knows where she has been. They... And, they think she's just doing her Sunday rounds or whatever. Uh, so she goes, like you said, to the store and buys a bunch of shit, buys some bandages, buys some candy and some other little things. And the whole time she is just like cringing in pain. And I am just like, I cannot believe she has the wherewithal to go through all of this. I would be crawling home empty handed. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the foresight because she knows exactly what they're attempting to do. So she just keeps in mind, like, Mm -hmm. I got to outsmart them on this. I got to. And what she, when she like finally gets home, she's playing it off. Like Prim gave her the wrong directions and she was Mm -hmm. on an errand and misheard and wandered around. And this is masterful. This whole yeah. scene is so wonderful because yeah, it's really good. Hamish and Peta pick up what she's doing instantly mm-hmm. and play into it in the exact tone that is meant to diffuse things, making fun of her, her being cranky and denying that she misheard. The whole sense of it mm-hmm. as a joke. And, oh, I told you she doesn't listen when people talk to her. Like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I I loved it so much. I really did. This kind of, like, this was, it's funny because you and I, before we started recording, we're talking about this game called Concepts. And those of you who are interested in board games, like, you probably already know about it. But it's a really fun game that's sort of similar in idea to something like uh charades where you're given a random like title of a book or a person or an object and you have to get people to figure it out but you're putting some like putting these little uh, markers next to symbols on a board to try and lead people in the right direction with what the things mean or the connections between two ideas and what that can mean and i was telling rashawn how good at it me and owen are and that we like are able to practically read each other's minds and i was like try i said to rashawn i bet you and i would be the same way because (laughs) i put a marker next to television and next to a happy face and he instantly said the good place and rashawn 
was like, that's, oh my God, I was about, <laughs> and I, was like, I knew it. <laughs> if we were in this situation, I fancy we could do this. I believe we could too. I think we could 100% just pull it off. Like we mm-hmm. know each other. We can read. We are both very heightened in our sense of the tone of the room a lot mm-hmm. of the time and predicting what somebody wants or expects to hear and managing to make things into a bit of a joke and diffuse. I really see that we could like, but you have to be with people who get it who can yep. see the signs and the warning, the red flags and know enough context to be able to like put two and two together. And not everybody's able to do that. And that's not their fault, mm-hmm. but I just, there's something about knowing that she has people around her capable of this. That is so reassuring. You know, I just, I love the way like the, the whole group just understood the assignment. Mm-hmm. Um, even even like Prem and her mom a little bit. Like her mom is like, her mom says about the peacekeepers for like no reason. She's just like, they've been waiting for hours, which is important for Katniss to know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And they're trying to be like, oh yeah, we have a message to deliver you. And she's like, mm-hmm. the fuck you do? You're <laughs> sitting here waiting for me to not come home so that you can arrest them and question mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. And now they have to deliver a he wants you to know the the electricity's back on. And she's like, right. wow, Lame. amazing. Lame. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the message is for your cousin. So why aren't you at his house? Right. He's the one you caught doing something wrong, quite frankly. Why are you at my house? <laughs> and when they say this, the electricity is going to be on. Wasn't it already? Oh, my God. He <laughs> fucking starts hamming it up do you hear me oh my god she says something like well i'm really glad this lapse in security has finally been dealt with (laughs) i was cracking up she's like i'm pushing things i know (laughs) it but the comment gives me a sense of satisfaction at one point the like there's two peacekeepers there in uh like there's a woman and a man and at one point the man kind of like chuckles it all like the back and forth amongst the Mm -hmm. family and the woman is like not amused nah um, and she is getting less and less amused the longer this goes on. <laughs> yeah, she he's just willing to be like, oh, these jokesters. Mm-hmm. And she has no tolerance at all, clearly. She's just not buying it and is irritated that she somehow managed to mm-hmm. slip past them. You know, and she is all like, "Oh, okay, all right. Well, what's in the bag then? If you're so smart, because she's mm-hmm. like, that's going to be like the thing, right? Show me what's in your fucking bag." And you know, to her surprise and chagrin, <laughs> it's just regular shopping shit. <laughs> yep, it's more uh, bandages. It's candy. Like they were thinking she was going to have game in her bag, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it, I really had a like <laughs> a. Uh, Die hard moment of like, oh, no bullets. You think I'm a fucking idiot? (laughs) (laughs) That would be a lot funnier to me if I had actually seen the movie, but it's a funny line on its own. You can't sit here and tell me (laughs) that you haven't ever just sat down and watched all of Home Alone or I had Rashawn. I know that Christmas is an important family holiday (laughs) and that you should be with your husband for it. And I respect that. But also you are going to spend Christmas with me one year and I am going to tape you to a chair and toothpick (laughs) your eyelids open and make you watch the two Uh, seminal Christmas tradition movies that I absolutely watch every year. You're going to Ludovico, a DeLodovico? That is just, it's too meta for me. Wait, what's a Ludovico? The Lu- uh, oh, you haven't, you're not really, you didn't watch A Clockwork Orange, right? you never seen that? I haven't, no. Uh, I yeah, heard it was yeah, very f- disturbing and I was like, I'm are, good, thank you. I, there's a, a thing they do where they force him to watch a bunch of shit to get him to behave differently. Mm-hmm. And they 
force his eyelids open so he's got like this this contraption on it i have seen the stills of that yes that that so that thing that they're doing to him is called the ludovico method oh my god and then of course my last name is the lodovico so it's very close so that joke i made was actually really good that's a really good joke wrong time wrong audience (laughs) wow no i like it that's one of the few times that explaining it doesn't ruin it actually i liked it i appreciated it um but yeah, this is like, they just tell Steve that there's going to come a time where he's going to have to do without you at Christmas. And <laughs> I can't be held responsible. He should have taken care of this himself ages ago. And I hold him partially responsible you know, as well. I bet he's never seen either of those movies either. We've never talked about it, but I'm willing to bet he hasn't seen either of them either. Wow. I, I, ask him I might be it. just planning a home invasion. <laughs> oh, no, at this point. <laughs> I could just imagine how absolutely begrudging steve would be because he wouldn't be rude to me because of you because he loves you and he would just be like i'm not hurting her feelings about her best friend but he would hate it so much (laughs) oh my god he would and 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 you know people are always like i don't see how you two are together it's because we're very very similar Mm -hmm. we just present very differently (laughs) inside they're both frowning but rashawn puts the smile out (laughs) He does not. Exactly. <laughs> but inside, I am frowning. <laughs> that should, I want that on a t shirt. It should just say, Inside, I am frowning. <laughs> uh, so, all right, all right. So, yeah, this uh, winds up being passed off. They leave, and she basically collapses, and they have to do an exam, and they wind up putting her on bed rest because they think she's broken something in her foot. Um, and Candace herself is just like, great. I feel like shit. So I'm fine with bed rest. I sort of expected her to be like, no, I'm fine. No, but she was, she's she was, had she it. Lost it from everything that's been going on. Yeah. And I love this. Peter takes her upstairs to bed cause she can, she can barely walk and she doesn't want him to, and her, oh, and her mom gives her some medicine and some of that sleep syrup. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and as Peter is putting her to bed, she asks him to stay with her. She wants him to get in the bed with her like they did b- before but she understands that she she can't ask for that yeah she she can't she can't put this it says for some reason that i can't quite form i know i'm not allowed to ask that so she just asks him to just stay with her until she falls asleep and um and Peter admits to her that when she was gone he thought she changed her mind and they have to be really careful how they speak to each other because there's an assumption that her house is completely bugged. When I tell you that every time she reminds me of that, it makes me so angry. Mm-hmm. I keep thinking, like, imagine? why don't you just tell him? And then she says that, and I'm like, oh, right, oh, my mm-hmm. God. Like, I forget, you know? What a horrific way to live. Yeah. I um had uh, an author uh, that I, used to, I read a lot of would write about his life in uh, – Soviet Union and uh in like right at the in like right after like World War II right around that time mm-hmm. and um he talked about like how nothing was ever safe you always assumed that people were watching you and listening and spying and and the sort of paranoia that it created mm. you know um and I like that's what this feels like. That's what it reminds me of. That sort of like you, there's you, you have to go way out of your way, you know, to have a conversation with somebody and hope that nobody is listening, that nobody is watching, and like trying to imagine living that way where you just can't speak freely. Yeah, in your own home. Mm. No, thank you. No, thank you. And it also has got to fuck with your mental state, right? Oh, like there's 100%, no way to be yeah. healthy and and feel safe or any of it secure or any of that. Um, but 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 as she was reminded, this is not her home, is it? This True. is the house she gets to live in. <laughs> True. I appreciate being reminded of that as well because like I don't feel like I remembered from my first read through that she dies and her family has to move back. 
mm-hmm. which uh, gives the whole thing a very different energy even than it was given to me by the Capitol, which already made it feel like, well, this doesn't feel like yours. It feels like a trap. Right. But mm-hmm. knowing that it's like not even for life, it's just for while I'm alive. Mm-hmm. Ew, ew, ew. And you, you can't like bequeath it to anybody else. Exactly. Like it's not yes. yours, you know? It's like when you win the lottery, but you, you take the you don't take the payout, and then when you die, they stop paying you. <laughs> Do they? That's what I've always heard. I don't know if that's changed or not. I've always heard that if you, um, you know how they do like installments, or you can take the cash payout for like half of whatever the actual full jackpot was. Oh yeah. Um, if you take the payouts, you get the air quotes full amount after taxes. But I've always heard that if you die they stop like you can't you can't you can't put in your will and my son will get the lottery payments after i die Ah. (laughs) but i don't know if that's still true or if that was just like you know pre-internet stuff people would say and you had no way to check fact check it in real time you just think it's true because you heard it the one time (laughs) i wonder if uh that would be like a that feels like a good sort of um plot line for a murder mystery where you know it's like no but they have to be kept alive that doesn't make any because they are the payments will stop after i'm gonna think on this feels like something's there what you got to do is you got to get them incapacitated right there you go and then you you like you you do it like old style like what men used to do with their wives just lock that bitch in the attic Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right and then you just keep collecting the checks for own safety (laughs) yep 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 (laughs) um (laughs) <laughs> i'm sorry guys we really do some tangents on here oh, it is no. out of hand sorry <laughs> um so she like the the recovery time goes by she's doing better um and her and Peta are hanging out and he's doing work on their family book which is basically this. the documentation of the plant's and their uses and their the drawings of them and he's coloring in a lot of the drawings she is looking at him like this motherfucker kind of fine mm-hmm. look at them eyelashes mm-hmm. <laughs> i really love that at one point he looks up and it feels like he like caught her spying mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and she's like i guess i kind of was actually mm-hmm. and um, he says to her I think this is the first time we've ever done anything normal together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's really sweet. And, and like, I don't know. It's the sort of thing that makes me wish that Owen was interested in any of the projects, like artistically that I like to do, because it is the sort of thing that I like the concept of doing it together, you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but he has no interest and frankly, no aptitude in that area. <laughs> and so, you know, I, it's, I've let go of it, but I, when I it was wistful in an alternate universe, Owen is on a podcast talking about how he wishes you would play like X-Wing fighter or whatever it is. That Probably. He Listen, I did. I gave it a shot. That's the main thing. Oh, that's right. You did try, mm-hmm. didn't you? Mm-hmm. I always give it a shot. But Owen is... It's probably more upsetting to you tried it and just don't like it. It's probably worse than like just not having an aptitude for it. I think with Owen, the thing that's worse for him is what if he tries it and disappoints me? If I Aww. try the game and I'm bad at it, he's fine with it because he hates losing. So <laughs> that's great, you know? But uh, if he tries something and he's just not good at it and I'm just like, never mind, I, we can't use this then you know which he helped me make some cookies at christmas and he rolled them so many times because he wasn't getting the size right Mm -hmm. they're supposed to bake and get a crack across the top to signal that they're done but he rolled them over and over trying to get it right and they wound up never getting that crack so they were over baked because i kept checking them and the crack hadn't formed and i was like okay they're not done and i finally was like these have to be done And then it turns out it was his batch that he just fucked the dough up by handling. (laughs) So they were like, I'm listening and I am commiserating with Owen because I'm like, you can do that. That's mm -hmm. a thing that can happen. You can fuck the dough up. How are you supposed to know that? (laughs) 
And I remember I was just like, oh, you just re-rolled the... And he was like, oh, so it's my fault? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> like, I, I was like, I feel like I'm supposed to say no, but it quite literally is. So I'm not oh, going to say no. no. But uh, he said was, no. He was fine. Who would it have hurt? <laughs> I mean, he would know I was lying. He would know. But yeah, it was... It was uh, one of those moments of me being like, right, right. This is why we don't do this. Okay. <laughs> One of the reasons I, I like this moment too with her and Peta is that when she has time with Gail, when they're not like at each other's throat, you know, she's seeing all the things she likes about Gail and she appreciates about him and mm-hmm. she finds attractive in him. But then when she's with Peta and they're not at each other's throat, she sees all these things she likes about him that she finds attractive. Yes. Yes. And it's because both men, both boys, I'm not sure about how much of a man man they are just yet. I still think of them as just being very young. But both of them are, you know, attractive in their own ways. There's a, you know, both of them have these qualities that are very, very attractive. Um, And so it makes sense that when she's with one, she'd be like, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at him. He's. He's got a little something going on, doesn't he? <laughs> and then she's with the other. She's like, "Oh yeah, this guy. This guy's all right too." <laughs> yeah, I feel like um, when I first read these, I was much more of a fan of Gail in a lot of ways because I liked that spiciness. Mm. But now, as an older woman, I'm just like, "Peter's where it's at. He's got very Samwise Gamgee energy for me." I mean, it is remarkable. Like the the first book, you know, I did not know what to do with Peter, and for the majority of that book, I was low key like, I don't trust this dude at all. Mm-hmm. I'm like this close to being like, fuck this dude. <laughs> <laughs> but he turned out to be what, at least so far, quite the little cinnamon roll. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he, he, he is. <laughs> yeah. Um. Which is what made it so funny to all of us how much you and Miles both were just like, this fucking guy, what is he up to? And we were like, what? (laughs) (laughs) I felt so fucking validated when Miles was having the same reaction I was having. (laughs) (laughs) I really do. I did. I enjoyed it so much because I did not see that coming. I didn't foretell at all that you were both going to just be like, I don't buy it. I think that the world has just fundamentally changed us as people. Yeah. Right. I don't know exactly when you read these, but, but if it was more than say seven to 10 years ago, it was about 15 years ago. Oh yeah. See, we were different people 15 years ago. I probably wouldn't have had the reaction. Yeah. It's a, this is, this is, this is a whole different place we're living in now. (laughs) It is. Yeah. Hence going for, for, the soft cinnamon roll boy over yes. the uh revolutionary Strong. hunter boy yes yes yeah yes i want a soft life mm-hmm. i also want to burn everything to the ground but i don't want to be like i want to burn everything to the ground in spirit but really what i want is some freshly baked bread please thank you <laughs> i only ask for the comforts <laughs> um so this is the they have the required viewing um my first sighting is a news story referencing the dark days i see the smoldering remains of the justice building and just catch the black and white underside of a mocking jay's wing that doesn't prove anything really however oh this isn't the required viewing that's later my bad several days later something else grabs my attention and it's a newscaster who's clearly been like Fo- like photoshopped mm-hmm. or in front of a green screen mm-hmm. of the exact same footage and she brings this up to Hamish later and he rightfully is like they just don't want to fly them all why would they it's yeah. it's perfectly usable footage there's a million reasons yeah why they wouldn't use it and i mean that it makes true. sense but it it felt like flimsy to me i get it it felt flimsy also because the capital is so focus on the superficial and like how everything looks and mm-hmm. your perception i feel like they would love to fucking go and show the ruins 
if ruins were available to be shown. Mm. They would just, it just feels like they would be all about that, you know? Yeah. Um, and that they're, I mean, clearly the people of the Capitol are interested in it because they're they're going through the trouble of green screening it so they can let people know, remind people about like what happened there and why, you know, they won and why you can't go there. But um, yeah, if 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 13 was a place they could get to, it feels like they would 100 percent do that. Yeah. I see that. I, uh, <laughs> I just, the fact too, that like what's tipping them all off is that it's a mocking Jay. I'm just mm-hmm. like, yeah, all right. I mean, I, you know what? I wasn't even going to say a thing. <laughs> I was going to let her have that and, and not even on the nose, it out. but a little bit, no, a little bit. Fine, <laughs> fine. Um, so she gets a surprise visit from her, Silas and the team. Yeah, these bitches are early and they think it's cute. Mm-hmm. It is never cute to be three weeks early Ugh. from shit. Nobody ever likes that. Don't do it. <laughs> don't be early. Like, more than 15 minutes. Just otherwise, don't do it. Don't show up at my house two hours early. What? Get out of here. I'm not ready. <laughs> uh, yeah, I had somebody who used to come to parties like an hour early and it was agonizing. Fuck? I would literally be in the shower hearing the doorbell no, ring. Like absolutely not. Yeah, don't don't it was do the that worst. fucking shit. Um, <laughs> sorry, I just had so <laughs> <angry. laughs> such a moment there. Um and they sweep her up into getting ready and have to hide the scar on her face from the whip and everything. And they mention about how they can't get shrimp. This. We haven't been able to get any seafood for weeks because the weather's been so bad in District 4. Mm -hmm. Huh. No seafood for weeks from District 4. The barely concealed rage in the crowd during the victory tour. And suddenly I am absolutely sure that District 4 has revolted. I love this. I love this so much. So when she starts asking about all kinds of stuff. Right. Because she had been like listening to them chatter like they always do. And she's zoning them out like she always does. And this little, this little bit of info pricks up her ears. Mm -hmm. And then she's like, oh, so what else has been hard for you guys? This, this, this terrible winter. What else has it done? And I love this. They are not used to, to wanting for anything. So any little disruption they're going to fucking notice. And it's going to feel like, I can't believe this is happening to us. I'm very attacked. Right. Oh my God. Called out. Called Called out. out. (laughs) Like, cause that's the thing too, right? Like you're reading this book and we're all like, Oh, we're district 12, bitch. We are the capital. Literally. (laughs) Like we are the district 12 of the capital. Like, yes, you know, yes. but we are still very yes. capital for yeah. sure. <laughs> I'm out here like during the pandemic, like, where is my cream cheese? Where is it? <laughs> I am going to kill somebody. Where's my cream cheese? We were crying over the price of eggs. Like, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, well, it was, it was goddamn ridiculous. $12 for eggs. <laughs> it, it's ridiculous, but they were there. But they were there, right? You know, like <laughs> other people didn't have it. <laughs> we're just this is unacceptable. Just like ready to fucking bite somebody's head off, like we're an angry guest in a hotel with low blood sugar at oh seven in the God. morning, demanding why the fucking buffet isn't open yet. Like an old man trying to send back soup. <laughs> he was angry that day, my friend. <laughs> But yeah, so uh, so that's uh, some some hints of what's going on out in the world. Yeah, there's and there's been a lot of uh, things missing. There's um there's a uh, crab meat and music chips and ribbons, and she gets the idea from them that uh so District Four is this seafood and uh electric electronic gadgets are District Three and fabrics are District Eight. And she's like, all right, that's like, that's three or four districts right there. That's a, uh, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, and she has to go and try on six gowns and 
you know, very, very different styles, which I, of course, am into. Yeah. Creamy lace and pink roses and ringlets. Ivory satin. Gold tattoos. Greenery. A sheath of diamonds and a jeweled veil. Moonlight. Heavy white silk and sleeves that fall from my wrist to the floor. And pearls. And it turns out they get to vote on her wedding dress in the castle. Oh, this has been a whole thing, it turns out. This has been a whole series that's been airing. I am so into this because you know, like, it's just moments like this that you really are like, oh yeah, this bitch worked in this industry. Like, (laughs) you know, this is certainly Mm -hmm. would be the way this would be handled. I just love these details so much. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, when we find out, because a little bit later when the it's time to watch TV and Prim is like, Oh, it's going to be your wedding dresses. And Candace is like, we literally just did that. There's no way it's going to be my dresses. Like there's no time. They haven't had a chance to prepare anything for, mm-hmm. for TV. And they didn't need to prepare anything The her in the, in the gowns was just like the, the tail end of the whole fucking thing. <laughs> yeah. And her mother and Prim are like really elated after this photo shoot. And she's like, what is with them? And then she realizes that they think if she's getting this wedding paid for and they're carrying on with this, it means that Katniss is safe. Yeah. And uh, yeah. it turns out she has nightmares about being in this dress. Yeah, this nightmare, She's it's torn and muddy and she's being chased by the uh, mutations and eventually they overcome her and she wakes up screaming and yeah you're gonna have some fucking nightmares after what she's been through yeah um and she wakes up and it's like too close to morning to even be worth trying to go back to sleep and also she still hasn't had an opportunity to tell anybody anything mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um because she's been housebound and the house isn't safe to talking like we talked about so she wakes up feeling like I got to fucking, I got to talk to somebody. I can't stand it. I got to go find somebody to talk to. So she goes looking for Hamish because she's desperate. Yeah. <laughs> and he, they talk about whether or not this uh, rebellion could even work where they are. And he says that the district is just not big enough. Like there are other districts yeah. where even if only half the people participate that's so many that it was still you know but -hmm. district 12 it's all of them or nothing yeah he has some i love this it uh it says that her and hamish have kind of a shorthand now Mm -hmm. so she's able to just bring him up to speed in just a few minutes and he has some info for her from wherever his sources are which we don't have that information yet but he tells her that there's rumors of uprisings in District 7 and District 11. So those two plus the three she had already heard about. So now we're up to like five. Mm-hmm. But yeah, then he tells her the thing about how it's got to be everybody or nothing. Um, and she's like, well, maybe we can do it at some point. And he's like, maybe, but we're small and we're weak and we don't develop nuclear weapons with a little bit of a shot. You know, yeah. sarcasm. <laughs> yeah. And then she asked him, what do you think that they'll do, the capital, she means, to the districts that are rebelling? And and he says, well, you heard what they did in eight. You saw what they did here. I mean, he doesn't say anything about it, but she saw what they did at the other one, too, um, District 11. Uh, which isn't really an uprising that happened at 11. That was just a little show of... Yeah, a really mild, like, you know, yeah. A, like, yeah, uh, I was going to call it like a show of appreciation, you know, but it, it it was, it was nothing. They didn't, they whistled. They whistled <laughs> and they all did this, the, the, the fingers, the fingers, just, like right? in unison indicating that it had been pre-planned. Which and that's that the thing that's scary, thing. yeah. Right, no pre-planning, no getting together to plot, no, no organization. Exactly, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> you, you just sound like you're like, I'm gonna give it to them that I I see the point, but also but I'm, fascists, I'm, right? These <laughs> <laughs> fucking fascists. Yep. 
<sighs> so she asked him, do you really think 13 was destroyed? And uh, she she wants him to say, maybe it's still there. Like me. <laughs> I also wanted him to say that. <laughs> yeah. And really, like, the answer he gives her isn't even like, yeah, I think it has been destroyed. It's, it doesn't matter. Like, wh- like it's, it's, you people are, are hanging on to something, but there's also a vibe of like, and if it were there, and then what? Mm-hmm. You're, what are you going to, you're going to run away and go to Disney 13? Shut up. Like, no. Yeah. There's just a, a real fatalistic attitude with Hamish, which I understand after yeah, yeah. everything, you know? Um, so she gets home and this is the required viewing thing. It turns out that they are showing her wedding gowns. And she's worried that it might be the shoot. And when Prim suggested, that's when she's like, no, nah, it can't be. They only took the pictures yesterday. But she's thinking to herself, I hope it's not that because I haven't had a chance to talk to Gail and I don't want him seeing mm-hmm. all of this, you know, this way. Uh-oh. But it turns out you don't really get a choice. You haven't had a choice any at any point. So why did you think you were going to get one now? Yeah, right. Um, and this is, oh yeah, here it is. They, that the Caesar is about to leave and she's about to turn the TV off, but he's telling us to stay tuned for the other big event. Uh, it's time for our third quarter quell. What will they do? Ask Prim. It's isn't for months yet. We turn to our mother whose expression is solemn and distant as if she's remembering something. It must be the reading of the card. Mm-hmm. which none of which they don't have any memory of this and then later when she mentions the name of someone they're like my mother has never mentioned that person's name ever yeah right it's like this and we had a moment with her mom and Hamish in the last chapters talking about the sort of like before times mm-hmm. her mom has got a whole lived experience that her she has not shared with her girls Katniss has no idea about any of it and mm-hmm. I, I desperately want them to have a conversation i don't just just have a conversation i think it'd be and i don't know if it would be necessarily do anything but i think it would be very healthy and healing Mm. interesting um so we find out two of the quells that were held so far and what they did yeah on the 25th anniversary yeah president snow is reading this as a reminder to the rebels that their children were dying because of their choice to initiate violence. Every district was made to hold an election and vote on the tributes who would represent it. Hmm. That one is grim. And Katniss is like, oh yeah. Like just thinking about it, it would definitely be worse to find out that they had decided I was the one that could die and they would be like most okay with it. Mm. That is so hideous Mm -hmm. to me. Like just the forced participation is the, the ways that they have figured out how to like approach it from different angles is really creative in a way that I don't like yeah. to say that because it feels <laughs> positive, but yeah. you know, this little speech that he gives to, I don't know if he actually gives a speech or this is just her reminding us what the point of the quarter quells are, but the whole thing about th- that um, every 25 years, the anniversary would be marked. It would call for a glorified version of the games to make fresh the memory of those killed by the district's rebellion. So, this whole thing from the Capitol's point of view is like Memorial Day. Mm-hmm. You know, we're, we're, we're remembering the people we lost based on your violence against us. You have yeah. to suffer. We're making you suffer. And it, uh, mm, <laughs> I say Memorial Day, I'm not like making any kind of like snarky, you know, judgments on our Memorial Day practice here. I'm just saying that that's kind of how this is being framed, right? Mm-hmm. That this is about me- memorializing the people that the capital lost 
and also punishing the instigators, people, right? But mm-hmm. this is going on for seventy five years. The the people who actually participated are not around anymore. Mostly, yeah. Right. One would assume. So, right. Uh, right. If, you know. If <laughs> <laughs> so, who were you punishing? You just in perpetuity, just going to punish them forever. Mm-hmm. That's the plan mm-hmm. here for hundreds of years. Because for all those cards you got in your little box. <sighs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I don't know why the way you said that was so insulting, but just like, mm, you're a little Cause box. Because I called it a little box. <laughs> okay. You and your little box. Um, and then that was, that's what they did for the 25th. And then over the 50th. Ugh. Jesus Christ, these fucking people. As a reminder that two rebels died for each capital citizen, every district was required to send twice as many tributes. I imagine facing a field of 47 instead of 23. Worse odds, less hope, and ultimately more dead kids. I wonder why she says 47. Oh, because you're the one. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. The doy. Um, (laughs) I had a friend who went that year, says my mother quietly, Maisley Donner. Her parents owned the sweet shop. They gave me her songbird after a canary. Prim and I Hmm. exchange a look. It's the first we've ever heard of Maisley Donner. Maybe because my mother knew we would want to know how she died. Mm. (sighs) Mm. So then he pulls the card. Actually, before we do this, I just want to mention, too, that was the year that Hamish won. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if there's, like, I'm sure at this point her mother has sort of moved past it, but that was her friend. And I wonder if there's any, like, residual resentment in her mother that her friend died and he made it. You know, like it might be, I I mean, I had never really stopped to think about what it would be like to be in a district that won, but your particular person of the two didn't. I mean, of the, of the four. Right. Right. Yeah. Before that that year. Yeah. 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 So, um, I mean, we don't have any details. I mean, we don't, I mean, Hamish could have been the person who killed her. Maybe, maybe not. We have no idea. All we know is he came home and nobody else did. I think that um, what I think is interesting, if you think about the residual resentment and then having your daughter go into the games and understanding that Hamish is going to be who she has to work with. And now he's all up in your house, too. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, like, yeah. I don't know. Her mom is a... You know, we don't really get much from the mom because Kat- Katniss is not really that interested in her mother um, for reasons that we we understand. You know, after her father died, she's kind of just written her mother off. Yeah. But um, I'm curious if we will continue to get these little insights into her mom. I guess if Katniss is going to be going back into the arena, she's going to be leaving her mom fairly soon. So our opportunity to have more of these moments might be few and far between. <sighs> so yeah that brings us to on the 75th anniversary as a reminder to the rebels that even the strongest among them cannot overcome the power of the capital the male and female tributes will be reaped from their their existing pool of victors hmm. my mother gives a faint shriek and prim buries her face in her hands but i feel more like the people i see in the crowd on television Slightly baffled. What does it mean? Existing pool of victors? Then I get it. What it means. At least for me. District 12 only has three existing victors to choose from. Two male, one female. I am going back into the arena. I was so fucking mad, y'all. I was so mad. You kind of called this... I did not want it to be. Mm-hmm. I really didn't want it to be. I don't. I. I don't have any interest in seeing her do this again. I really don't. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm. 
I don't, I'm not a hundred percent convinced that we get another hunger games like we had in the first book. Okay. But I don't know how or why yet. Right. Like I don't, doesn't feel to me like we're about to do all that over again, hmm. but I'm not exactly sure what we're going to do instead. I don't know if the bulk of the book is going to be before it's time to be in the arena or if, I don't know. I just don't feel it in my spirit. <laughs> now I'm going to tell you how I felt the first time reading this again, like 15 years ago. Okay. Okay. I fully expected the second book we were going back into the arena. Really? It wasn't even like as things go on and I find out about the quarter quell. No. My, and again, I am really jaded about the way that this is supposed to be because this is a YA series with a formula and the, you know, the whole thing. I was just like, this writer created the games. The games were the whole fucking centerpiece. It was the thing. Everything revolves around that. And she doesn't have anything left in the well. She's got to go back to it. Oh. She's going back to the fucking games again. Big surprise. Oh, I see. was really derisive <laughs> about returning to the games. And I felt like, okay, yeah, you're all at ideas. I see. That was my whole like. Interesting. I wasn't horrified by it. No? I wasn't seeing the like oppression of the capital. I fully felt this is the writer not knowing what else to do and wanting to make money on a YA series and giving everybody the exact thing they got from the first book again. Oh shit! That it was a cash grab and lazy. Oh shit! Yeah. That was like, I was really disgusted, frankly, about it. And not because wow, of the Wow, for all the wrong intended. reasons. Yeah. <laughs> Fully. Now, let me ask you, how did you, well, maybe you can't tell me because of spoilers, but um, I was going to say, how did you feel when you finished the book? Did you still feel like it was just a cash grab? But I, you can't probably tell me that without. Do you mean the first time? Yeah, or the first the, time. The first time I felt, I still, I I will say this again, reminding you. I finished that first series with the same attitude. The like through the first read, I was still the same person I was. All the way through all three books? Yeah. It oh. wasn't until reading it recently as a full grown full grown. Oh. That I really started to like be like, "Oh, I see what she's doing." Oh so, God. when I finished it the first time, I was still very much like, "Mhm." Mm Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was very like there were. I still like really enjoyed a lot of the series, but I did not respect the themes. Funny, you know, at all. So it's really funny to me because like now coming at it and guessing what happens in the second book, I don't know if I would make this sort of guess, you know. Mm. but I would have absolutely immediately just been like, so second book, clearly we're just probably going to like do this again. <laughs> and it was interesting because in the discord, a lot of people were saying that they were blindsided by this announcement. The idea that like, we're going to, we're going to do an all-star thing, like what you had guessed. And I, that is just not my experience as at all. Mm. So I'm always fascinated to hear the reaction that other people had to it because I was just a fucking snot. <laughs> I really was like, I was out here just being like, I can see all the gears and I really thought I was so clever. And that's nah, always the way, you know, mm. it's just like, I just really didn't understand. I just didn't get it. Um, so, you know, just, just, I'm, I'm telling you enough to just say, she's not just going back to the well, <laughs> not. you know, like there, there may perhaps be an element of that, but the, the reasoning is very clear, you know, what the capital is trying, the example mm -hmm. they're making of her mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it isn't convenient reasoning it is internally consistent and believable 
mm-hmm. in this universe. Like, yep. And the fact that they would try to play it off again, like we said at the beginning, oh, it just so happens that this year's card that was written 75 years ago is saying, you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right, come on. You just, come on. Yeah. Yeah. We can all see through this, right? But you know what? Oh, that's a good question. Can we all see through this? I wonder what the response is. Because she says the crowd is just sort of like confused. Mm-hmm. Um, I wonder what the reaction will be. I think the people in the districts will know exactly what the fuck this is and why it is. Mm. What we need are the people in the capital to see and know and give a fuck. But I don't, The I don't, I don't like, I want them to be like, no, you can't send them back in. We want them to get married and, and, and have babies and be invested in their lives. Pete and Katniss. Mm-hmm. But the, the people of the capital have, are have been painted anyway as such superficial and self-involved and like almost childish Mm -hmm. um in the way they think about things that i don't know they'll probably just eat it up you know it doesn't affect them at all doesn't you know, cause them, they don't lose anything by this, yeah. except what the entertainment they thought they were getting, which was the wedding and, you know, following Pete and Katniss. But maybe this will be even more entertaining to them. But the, but everybody else watching is good, because that's the point of this. Snow is sending a message to everybody else who's watching. Yeah. You know, to to shut them up. And I guess the question really is, is does it shut them up or does it enrage them Mm. i hope it enrages them what do you think i want it to enrage them i want this to blow up in his face and i want there to be uprisings in reaction to this news and i don't know what that would do i don't know if like i don't see president snow like he has made this declaration on tv he can't just walk it back you know like how does he say face yeah you know, they definitely do not see him being like, "Oops, psych." You know, they, they've already <laughs> had, the, like, you know, they've <laughs> already had the the game makers have already had to say, you know, psych once. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't see them saying it a second time, but I hope that this news sparks fires all across all the districts. Get it? Oh, see what I did there. Hey. I... <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> So do you have any predictions like other than you said you don't think it's going to go the way that it sounds like it's going to go right now? I don't think that we get chapters and chapters of them in the Hunger Games again. Okay. Like waiting to see who makes it in in each person like picture in the sky at night. I don't think that's what we get. Um, Why is that? I, I Like I said earlier, I'm not really sure, but I just it doesn't feel like that's the point. Hmm. Right. The point is that they are saying this is what's going to happen. I think that's the point. I don't necessarily think that it happens, though. OK. Um, but what why it doesn't happen, I can't I can't parse yet. You know how sometimes when you're reading something, you just like you just like you had the instinct, a gut feeling that she was going to go back to the well, you know, mm-hmm. like it just. It doesn't feel like that's the story she's really interested in in telling um but i don't know y'all maybe we do go back to the games again and maybe maybe they go back to the games but it's different this time maybe maybe they fucking go back to the games and these people these victors these retired people these people who are supposed to be safe feel some kind of way and maybe they all show up together and they're like, you know what? That's bullshit. Hmm. <laughs> and maybe, maybe that is what backfires. I don't know. <laughs> because that's part of the deal, right? You, you fucking win the games and you're safe finally. You're old, so you're safe. You know, all these things have happened. You, you, you did the games one time. You, you, you know, beat the odds. You made it home. And here these motherfuckers come talking about you got to go again. Yeah. I'm not, I'm going to feel a way about it. So (laughs) maybe, maybe the reaction to this news from the other victors as well is where, where the story is focused on. And maybe somehow 
that doesn't go as planned and that interferes why the games can't happen. Also, Prim does say that the games themselves are months away. Mm, yeah. So so this announcement is happening tonight, but she's not getting on a train to go to the Capitol in the morning. Correct. Right? Yeah. So there's still a lot of time between this announcement and the games themselves. And I think that something is going to happen between now and then. But I just I don't know what it's going to look like. Hmm. Maybe though, maybe maybe in the time between now and then, some a different type of revolution will a plot will foment will 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 come together. Um, Isn't foment a great word? It is, and like I can't believe I it, I I recalled it in in real time <laughs> to use it. That never happens. You know, when we were joking about like we use the same twelve words over and over again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, God, I'm so guilty of that. It's really sobering, you guys. Record yourselves for hours at a time daily and then report back because it's really like, wow, my vocabulary consists of roughly 70 words. Just re, it's like a fucking Taco Bell in here where you just take the same (laughs) ingredients and switch them around. Like, yeah, our our speaking vocabulary is like a tenth of usually our like understood vocabulary because mm-hmm. we just we get into habits of speaking and and we just do we do it over and over all day every day. Yeah, I'm telling you though, give me a quiz. I'm gonna light that shit up. <laughs> <laughs> There's been a couple books lately that I have been like, the what? And and it's really frustrating as you get older. You stumble across fewer and fewer words that you don't know, and it's harder to remember them because it's not something that you, like, once you run into it once, that's it. It's likely Mm -hmm. never going to turn up again, Mm -hmm. you know? (laughs) And uh, I I forgot about the one today. I think it's quixotic, which means, like, every day, like, mundane, you know? Is that what that means? I believe that's – I'm going to now – I looked it up earlier – quixotic is that is that the one i want oh no see i had the wrong word is that the, i always think of don quixote when i hear that word i totally had the wrong word so quixotic is exceedingly idealistic unrealistic ah because it's don quixote that makes look sense look at your girl look at your girl see what i tell you what i tell you <laughs> give me a fucking test i'm gonna light that shit up <laughs> I will say the same five words over and over again on a podcast, though. <laughs> the word that I was talking about was trying to uh, – quotidian. Ooh, I don't know that Quotidian, one. and that means, like, the everyday mundane. That's you know, good. Yeah, quotidian is, an, is a one that I had not heard. Quotidian. See, I'm already saying it wrong. Quotidian is not the word. It's quotidian. Quotidian. Yeah. That's good. I don't know. I I don't think I've ever heard that. That's very, very good. I will immediately forget it and I will never ever use it in a sentence. I found out what it meant and I was like, oh, nice. That's a good word. And I immediately said quixotic. That's not even the fucking word. It's a whole other different word that means a very different, like, I don't, I have no hopes of like keeping this. I get this way sometimes where I'm just like, I just want to mix it up a little bit. I just want to have something new in my, in my lexicon. So I have this, um, I think I mentioned it on the Unsober and I, this is a Hunger Games podcast. People don't care about none of this. Let me just stop right now. Never mind. No, tell me, <laughs> tell me. So I have this, um, one of it's, it's called Elevate and it is, uh, like a, like a brain teaser, kind of like keep your brain agile thing. Right. Mm-hmm. But, uh, it's a lot of vocabulary. But one of the one of the games is it will give you a, a very basic word. It'll say um, describe something as being disappointing, but use extreme or more you know descriptive language. So basically, synonyms for disappointing, but good ones, ones that aren't everyday words that you would use. And they call it recall because what it's testing is. You know these words. You have them, but they don't come to your mind when you're needing. You'll just say something is disappointing. So it's trying to challenge you to find those other words that are floating around in your brain. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But it's a timer. I can never get more than like three synonyms. Oh, man. And they're always like disappointing, sad. Less good. Less good. <laughs> <laughs> It's 
so bad. But like, but, but that's what it is. Like, it's like trying to get your brain to like get out of its rut and reach for the other words because you do know them. We do I know love these. What's words. it called again? Elevate. Elevate. Yeah, and I had the free version, so I can only play like three games a day. Man, but it is got all different kinds of little. Uh, there's one that like can try to increase your 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 reading comprehension speed. Mm-hmm. So like nonsense, not nonsense, but like a short paragraph will run, but it's animated. So it's like flying across the screen and it's giving you like information. And then it'll ask you like very pointed questions and see how much of the, how much of what you just read, you actually retained. Ooh. Um, and, it, and the more you play, the faster it goes. My, that sounds anxiety inducing. A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> there are also some math ones, but I just exit out of those. I have no interest in that. We're not. I'm not oh here for God. math. Elevate. Calm down. <laughs> absolutely not. Get out of here. Nobody's. <laughs> I am very comfortable with how bad I am at math. You guys do <laughs> not understand the way that my brain short circuits when it comes to math. <laughs> it is like, you know, I, I I swear to God, I really do think that I have that like numbers inversion thing. Um. I can't, what do they call that dyscalia? Is that what it's called? I think so. Maybe. I don't I think remember. I always want to say dyspepsia, but that's a very different thing also. <laughs> the girl's got words. She don't know what to do with. I'm just reaching into that word sack and pulling out whatever wriggling, struggling word I find that's yelling, no, no, that's not what I mean. I'm sorry, word. That's what you're being used for today. Yeah. I was close. I said it wrong. No, it's dyscalculia. Dyscalculia is dyscalculia. D y. Where's the where's the emphasis? (laughs) (laughs) I put the wrong emphasis. The lava. All right, we should wrap this up. All right. This is going wildly on (laughs) everything. (laughs) All right, friends. Well, I love you very much. um, And I hope that everybody has been enjoying the coverage. Uh, Rashawn is going to be recording with me very shortly again on the next chapters because she's going on a little trippy trip. Yeah, I'm going on a little trippy trip. So we're so, going to record again tomorrow. So I got to get up and read this and Song of Ice and Fire in the morning. It's going to be a, a big, big day. A big, 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 big day, <laughs> as Effie would say. Um, so I am going to say hi to new patrons in the next episode. Uh, right. Because we have, yeah, it's somewhat late now. We could have, we could have talked about new patrons, but instead we talked about. <laughs> we love you, new patrons. I swear, I'm so sorry, but you're great, and we like you. So sorry about that. Um, all right, everybody, thank you all again. I hope you are enjoying it. Let me know if you are. And until next time, toodaloo, motherfuckers. Bye, guys. <laughs> are you? Are you? That was an unspoiled network podcast.